Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome to Ancient Empires. This is a total conversion mod for Attila Total War, which looks to go ahead and bring the ancient world into the Attila campaign, completely revamping the way that buildings, technology, armies, economy, trade, and so much more actually work. And it really brings me back to the old days of Roma Serectum 2 and Europa Barbarossa and all them other mods which added so much detail into the game and kind of really revamped it. And I feel like Ancient Empires is definitely beelining towards that scale. At the moment there are only two factions done, that is Rome and Carthage, however when I say that all the other factions are still playable, but they don't have the amount of flavour that Rome or Carthage do have, and you'll understand that a lot when I do jump into the campaign, as Rome for example have a whole range of buildings just specific for their Roman Empire and the way that their government types work and granaries and, and there's just so much detail put into the building trees which is one of my favourite favorite parts of the mod themselves. So as I said, we're probably going to go ahead and start a mini campaign here with the main goal playing as Rome, just to destroy Carthage and maybe take the Po Valley. That should take us around about five, six parts to do, and I'll try and aim to make them like an hour long. So if you guys want to see episode two, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. And if we hit something like 600 likes, I'll go ahead and upload the next part. I know you guys can do it because you absolutely smashed the last one, which I set so we'll jump into the campaign really quickly and obviously playing as Rome being led by Scipio Africanus, the mightiest general of Rome in my opinion. He was an absolute beast. Uh, as we are Rome and we do get nice public order bonuses on our bread and games whenever we pop that edict. We also get loyalty meaning less civil wars and more influence for our characters along with more sanitation which is actually really important as you guys gotta I have to like remember I do this a lot when I'm playing this mod is I kind of think it's Rome and sanitation really isn't that big of a deal but this is Attila and in Attila disease can spread really easily like wildfire and you have to be super careful. We're also playing on hard because I'm not sure what the difficulty I should be playing on in this mod. I know mods like DEI go ahead and tell you to play on normal so I felt like I'd just stick it on hard and I guess we'll see how that pans out for me and hopefully it's not going to be too bad. So we'll jump into the campaign and get this bad boy started. With all of the mechanics as Ancient Empires completely changes the way a lot of stuff works, I'm not going to be running over in detail everything. I'm going to be mentioning it when I come to it. However, if you guys want to kind of get a bit more information about each of the mechanics and kind of make more sense of it before watching this, I'll make sure to link my other video down below in the description where I kind of go through each individual mechanic and talk about it. I go more in depth on the building tree, the you know the upgrade trees, economy, trade and everything like that. Um, and really try to go ahead and give you guys a bit more information. So if you have time, I recommend going back and watching that video because it will give you a greater understanding. Um, whereas this is kind of more of a campaign let's play where I'm going to be trying just to run through, you know, a good couple turns each episode and get stuff done and maybe not go into as much detail about everything. I will still be kind of generalizing it um, and trying to give you guys information about each of the mechanics, but not as in much detail. So as we can see, we are in you know, 202 BC, the second Punic War. We've already secured quite a lot of land from Carthage in the first Punic War, taking Corsica, Sardinia, Syracuse, as well as their southern provinces in the south of Spain. So we're in a great situation. However, we're also not in a great situation. You can see we are heavily indebted at the moment, we have minus 161 grand in debt, and we, we have a nice little kind of treasury of 100 grand, but nothing too crazy. As well as that, army-wise, we only have Scipio's army. Now, granted, he does have 7,500 soldiers. As you can see, he does have 34 units right here, um, and Hannibal has 40. And this is to kind of represent this huge battle at the beginning of the campaign. The Battle of Zama is literally about to happen. Hannibal's about to attack me, as I have landed in uh, in the north of Africa, really destroyed strike at Carthage. So if, for example, I was to lose this battle and have my army completely destroyed, I don't have another one and I'm heavily indebted. So I'm not going to be able to kind of muster and push back Carthage. That's why I feel like Carthage would be a really fun faction to play as, you know, you could kind of beat Scipio and then rebuild the Carthaginian Empire, taking your losses in, you know, Spain and Corsica, Sardinia and really coming back from the depths of defeat. However, we are not playing as Hannibal. We are playing as Scipio and we're going to have to defeat him. So I think our first issue 
as uh, as a you know as the Roman Empire is to sort out our economy and sort out our food. Now I will say this: uh, food and your economy are heavily tied to the seasons. So, for example, in summer where you're you know you're harvesting your crops and you're you're producing a lot more food, uh, you're going to be making a lot more money in them seasons because people are going to be able to sell the excess food and that's going to f- funnel into your economy. Whereas, for example, in winter you're going to be making a lot less food because the crops aren't going to be growing and you're also going to be not making as much money because there's not going to be enough as much to sell so you actually have to kind of really think about what season it is and what you should do so you should almost stockpile in the summer to prepare for the winter and obviously you know when you get out of winter that's when you should kind of start spending all your stuff and again you have to really just prepare for each season which is something i really love about this mod it has that level of detail so we have a decent amount of money to begin with. Obviously, we need to try and sort that out. But I think building-wise, we have to immediately sort out our food issues. I don't want to be, you know, in famine in certain regions. And I think, for example, Magna Grecia will be our breadbasket of Italy and, and help to feed the rest of our empire. We already have one nice farm there, a villa estate, which you can see actually does cost money to upkeep every turn. So, for example, buildings like the aqueducts and stuff like that, you know, and roads and other buildings do actually cost you a decent amount of money to keep up to scratch because obviously your entire empire is using these roads. So they're going to be getting ruined, you know, rocks are going to get displaced and you're going to have to repair that. So, for example, the public roads do cost me 20 grand to upkeep these tier 3 one no, which is over these tier what tier two ones do cost me a decent amount of money because they are very very good they produce a lot of money for me um but i need to keep them up to scratch so you kind of have to weigh up options when you are building stuff so let's go ahead and build a farm land here and start getting some more food so one of the things you have to really take into account when you're looking at producing food is these buildings all these three provinces right here or these three charts right here will tell me the effects happening to each of the each of the cities in this region so for example the province i'm currently looking at this one right here i want to check out how good the farmland is so at the moment you can see in the top of this tab is 90 percent agriculture and 10 percent cattle meaning that when we produce more if we produce a farm a farmland instead of a cattle pen we're going to be getting a ton more food because it's 90 percent agriculture if we go up to rome i think we can see if we take a look at rome it's 30 70 so cattle is better in rome than say it, farmland is and that's obviously to do with you know rome being a much more industrial urbanized city rather than you know a kind of open fields in the south of italy so we're going to pick up the public land and this is a really good uh, thing to always look at whenever you're playing the game because a lot of the regions are specifically ta tailored to do certain things and are less tailored to doing other things. So it's always good to kind of keep an eye on these effects so you can say, oh, this region is going to be really good for industry or this region is going to be really good for farming or cattle. And you can really just take that into account, which is something I really enjoy about the mod itself is it goes into that much detail and that might look scary at first, but realistically, all the information you need is right here and it's easy to access and if you read any of it they all tell you exactly what you need to know about the 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 bonus or debuff it is giving you so you can really just you know read this out and i feel like that's one of the things they've done a great job of and really needed to do a good job of is to go ahead and just inform the player what all these things do and i think once you read these once or twice you'll really get a good understanding of it all so we do have uh, woodcutters here as well. It's going to start producing us timber. So when it does come to trade, they've gone ahead and heavily increased the amount of resources each kind of trading thing does do, meaning that you get a lot more money through trade, meaning that you also go ahead and uh, need to actually focus on getting trade agreements. And if you lose a trade partner, it's actually going to affect you. So we might as well actually do that now so we have a better understanding of our, of our industry. Uh, please go away, good sir. I am no novice, I am the Roman Emperor. So also, something you have to really take into account as well is who's going to get annoyed at you for trading with certain people. So if I was to decide that I wanted to uh, trade with this kind of little Greek alliance down in the south, I'd have to be very careful because Macedon is currently at war with them, and if I did trade with them, they'd be pretty pissed. Macedon would get pretty pissed at me, and that would obviously affect me in the long term. Now, people like up here in the north is fine to, to trade with because, you know, but they're going to go ahead and, you know, protect my borders, keeping these guys happy is always good and you just see the sheer amount of money uh like increase of money we're getting from each trade agreement you can see that we're producing almost 15,000 fish to this settlement and they're giving me something like 2,000 glass which again is pretty good 
So you want to obviously be trading with them, trying to, uh, you know, encourage that, especially in the north as well, whilst I'm dealing with Carthage. The uh, well, the states over trade. here, I'm more than happy Set to trade with these word. guys. Oh, they're also my tributary state as well. So we'll definitely go ahead and pick these guys up. Do we have any more? Tri we do have another tributary state as well. Obviously taking me probably away from Carthage in the first Punic War. Um, anyone else? You guys probably, yeah, you guys aren't, but we can definitely trade with the Po Valley for now. It's going to help our economy a ton. And obviously, oh uh, yeah, these guys are my client state as well. Great. Yeah, we'll trade with all of these guys. It's going to be giving us a ton of money. And then, it's, do we want to trade with the Greeks? Do we think that they'll win their war against Macedon and Macedon's allies? Obviously, Macedon does have a lot of enemies right now. And there's actually a war, you know, with people up here, people down there. And we do have, obviously, interests. You know, if we piss Macedon off, they could come and get us. Philip V could attack us. But I think it's going to be worth it simply just to trade with... Um, just to simply trade with the Achaean League and also Crete and stuff like that. I think these guys will be much... Uh, like, it'll be more beneficial for it. Because, we look, we get, like, four grand. That's quite a lot of money. I and mean, obviously, we'll do roads as well. Um, yeah, we'll try and trade with roads. And I think that'll be enough be for our trade. And hopefully that'll help our economy up a lot. You know, we don't get as much money with these guys. We, we sell a lot more fish and stuff to the Spanish and the barbarians in the Po Valley. But that's already reduced our income quite nicely. So I'm happy with that. We're kind of slowly pushing up that income. And hopefully once we build a few more buildings, we'll go ahead and secure that fully. So Carver Nova, obviously have that silver mine. I definitely want to try and take advantage of. Or is it iron? I, I guess it's iron. Why can't we afford it either? And that requires iron. But we do have silver here, right? Yeah, we have silver there, so why can't we... Oh, yeah, it's right there, sorry. So we'll start mining the silver. That should hopefully produce us a nice amount. Unfortunately, I can't actually see how much it's producing me. I guess that's currently a bug they have, um, so it doesn't tell me how much, but I know it's going to be enough to, to make a decent amount of money for me. Same over here as well. We actually have a gold region down here, so we're going to be picking up a gold mine as well. That should, again, help, help our economy really sort itself out. We have a lot of money left. 83 grand left. Um, to go ahead and revamp a lot of our provinces. So something I'll mention now, which can get a little confusing, but if you understand it, it's pretty easy. So they've completely revamped the way that uh, the capital building works in each province. You can see here, there's a lot more information to be had. So for example, places in Rome are Rome classes, Roman colonies. So you can really decide about how they're governed. You know, are they governed militarily? Are they kind of made as like more civil? Are they made more of a a colony-based province, or are they made more solely for, like, the gods or something like that? And each one of these do offer really different stuff, you know, state-controlled, allied state and stuff like that, military colonies, and you can also have uh, military colonies down here as well. Uh, for example, though, the places over in Corsica and Sardinia are going to be completely different to this. You're going to have a completely different way of thinking, because this isn't Roman-founded. This is a foreign province which you've gone and taken control of. So you can actually have tributary states, which go ahead and give you money, you can see it tributes me 12,000 gold every single turn because they are a tributary state. And I love the way that this the, the mod team have created this. Instead of having to make the AI be a tributary and do that and not really have control of them, you can still have control of this faction. It's in your empire, but it's kind of governing itself. It's got a self-governed province um, just within your empire. And that's obviously historically correct. You know, Rome did have a lot of provinces which would be governed and they would be kind of submitted uh, to the Roman Empire but maybe still have control of a lot of their politics. So we do have this province tributary state, offers me money. This is a free state, it's under my control, but it basically can do what it wants. Um, and, oh no, is it, sorry, is this the one where we govern with Roman culture? Oh, so this is like, it's, it's, it's under my control. It's not like an allied state or anything like that, but it's, you know, it's heavily Latinized and you can slowly convert this to being more Latin. We then have uh, this one, which is an allied state. So basically they'll provide me units. Um, it governs itself. Uh, buildings and, and upkeep and construction are reduced because it governs itself. So basically I can make this more of an allied faction where a lot of the costs of buildings are covered by this kind of, I guess, invisible hand. Um, but, you know, I, I think I can't recruit, recruit troops in this region um, because of that. And you can also make an independent state as well, where your units are not welcome. They'll be annoyed at you if you do send them. However, they will be a lot happier because you're not trying to impose your rule. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense about stuff like that. I'm going to be running through it maybe when I do come to it a lot more um, a little bit later on. I think down here in the south, we're probably going to want to maybe upgrade a few of these provinces, um, as we do have some in Syracuse as well. 
Um, trying to increase that would be great. Maybe getting one of these as well would be good because you can see it's like the, the detail as well in the, in the tree is absolutely crazy. These are all the different types you can get in that slot. Then you have all the resource buildings going down and then you have just, it's just so much to kind of take into account for major cities. Now this is, this, all these buildings are simply just for these, these kind of slots right there. And you have all of this stuff as well, different ports, rural land, cities, civic, and each one of these have, you know, in-depth trees as well. The building thing is just something that will take getting used to, but it will be so good once you do fully understand it so sorry i've been rambling a lot talking about what i need to do but i feel like we kind of need to do that so that you guys get a better understanding i definitely want to build some granaries down here i might build a granary in syracuse and get that going and start getting some more uh, stored food going as you can see it gives me plus 50 food uh food reserve which i believe gives me more food over time if you hover over here you can see the food surplus um, at the moment, we have 210 in food reserve, and obviously that will hopefully get increased when we build more granaries, and I think that builds up over time. We still have a little bit of money, so I think what I want to try and do, because Corsica and Sardinia are very unhappy, I think over in Ajax, I'm going to convert the government and try and make it more Latin-based, and try and reduce that, because I think our major issue right here is the native discontent which is the cultural adversity in the normal game so because they're they're carthaginian they're not my culture they're gonna be pissed at me and hopefully we can sort that out um very very soon up here in the north do we want to build anything in rome we probably do want to build some more farms down in maybe in naples is naples or napoli good for farming at all probably not i can't imagine it's okay nothing great so it's probably not worth it doing it farmland in rome yeah again nothing's really that great up here you can also see the farmland is the second one down as well in that list of buffs. It gives me plus three food per fertility. And that's basically timed by the farmland. So for example, in this city, it'd be farmland, which is 40%, so four times free uh, to give you kind of your value of food, uh, which is really good. So I guess we'll just spend more of our money over in our provinces in Carfanova. That's already building, which is good. Probably do want to build something here. Maybe something military based. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe we don't really want to... We just want to focus on making this region happy. We could build a stone quarry, which would be kind of good. But they're just not very happy right over here. So what gives us public order? We probably want to maybe grab that up. So maybe this. Maybe some, yeah, some sacred ground would be good. More public order. Latin influence as well, which is a real issue. And we can obviously focus on building more temples and increasing that. So yeah, let's maybe build some of that. Try and sort out the public order issues. Could upgrade our granaries as well. Yeah, let's upgrade our granaries in Rome if we have any already, which I believe we do. Oh, uh, yeah, we already have one granary here, which I guess we'll upgrade. Do we have a granary in Rome yet? We don't. So I guess I'll probably build a, a granary in Napoli. Yeah. Well, we can also build olives. Oh, we definitely want to use that resource, though. Because as you guys saw, the more resources we get, the better. I guess we'll build a granary up here in the north. And um, we also have one province, which is all by itself, does have a granary already. And it is also a colony uh, province right now. A Roman colony is a military colony, so it gives us a good garrison straight off the bat. So good, 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 good. So we still have a little bit of money left. I probably want to try and save that a little bit. Um, and I guess we'll let Carthage attack us. Do I want to... Do I want Because I'm pretty sure it will just go away anyway. Because we're going to be heavily indebted. Um, we are converting this to Roman. Do I just want to go balls to the wall and convert both of these? This is Imperial. So this is more of my stamp on it, I think, than the other one. I guess we will go more Imperial. Because I want, you know, this entire Mediterranean plot right here to be a lot more Romanized. Technology-wise, they've made it so that technology is heavily based around the laws you enact. So, for example, you can have um, down here, you have your know, land reforms, land lease, tax farming reforms. So, a lot of the laws, and I guess militarily, you'll have them as well. You know, military law, recruit, different types of recruitment. Um, you also have organization and just different laws. So, they kind of try to tie in your research with you passing certain laws, which I think is really, really cool. I guess immediately, we're probably going to go down more of a military route, even though that growth would be nice. And public order would also be great as well. But I think going down that military route would be better. Getting access to more of the, I think this is like a different period of Astarte and Principes would also be great. So we'll go ahead and grab that up and that'll hopefully help us out a bit. Especially because we're probably going to have to rebuild the army for uh, for Scipio when he obviously he does fight this crucial battle against Hannibal. So we don't have a lot of money left. We're probably just going to end the turn and let Hannibal attack us and prepare for this battle. 
Oh, oh yeah, we only we need to do these as well. Senators. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead. Uh, we have a few statesmen. We probably do want to stick in. It'd be great if I could view the character. Oh, we can view the characters quite nicely. Great. So we can actually check out. I'm probably not going to go too into detail about this because obviously it would take me forever. But yeah, you'd definitely be a good uh, governor. So we'll send you into uh, probably Magna Grecia maybe. Unless I have a better farmer. Don't think I do. Actually, no, you're going Corsica and Sardinia, actually. Can I select it? I can't. But I can definitely see what region it is. So, yeah, you go into Corsica and Sardinia, my, my good sir. And you try and do it. Marcus Cato. Then also, um, we also have some people down here as well. I guess we'll continue to check out. Conversion to culture. That's kind of good. So, I'm probably going to stick you over into... Yeah, I'm probably going to stick you over into Carthage. Yeah, into Spain for sure. So, you'll help out there. Then we'll check out with these guys as well. So you haven't got anything. Great command, which is fine. Um, so you have influence per turn. You have management, intrigue for commanding force, and more management. So management is obviously going to provide us some nice little bonuses. Command obviously gives us more battle stuff. And popularity makes people love him, basically, if he has high popularity. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so I guess, yeah, you, you might as well go in somewhere as well. Um, I guess not too important. Yeah, you can go over into the Macedon region for sure. Keep that occupied. Um, then we obviously have some more people. So you're no one too special. Your integrity and you're more of a military guy. You're more of a naval guy, if anything. We have uh, Petius. See what he does. Impatient campaign movement range, but less replenishment. I'm not sure how much I like that, but obviously you're more of a military man. So we'll keep you for that. Popularity isn't great from this guy. Um, what about you? No, again, not too great. I definitely do need to stick some of these guys heavily into like Rome and stuff. So I guess some of these guys are just simply going to have to learn. But these guys are so good for uh, for military maneuvers. So I guess we'll just go ahead and stick some of these guys down here um, into our buildings and just hope for the best. You know, maybe more in our weaker ones and then try and find some good people for rome itself because again you're not really very good but i guess you can learn i guess you will learn so magna grecia no i don't really have anyone good for trading impatient which again yeah i wanted to keep him do i have anyone decent anyone with good management didn't check this guy as well did, did he have good management no he didn't <laughs> yeah i don't really have a great but i guess beggars can't be chosen we can always change this as well yeah scipio is not great either so cool we'll stick you into rome because um, I definitely want Rome to have, you know, people governing it. Because it means when we have it, we can also use people to govern these certain buildings. So now we're going to have so many edicts to pass. So up here in the north, what do we want to pass? Probably public... Oh, we don't have a lot of food to do building games, really. So that's the problem with these edicts, is some do really good stuff, some do okay stuff. That gives us 100 food, but loses us all our local economy. And adjacent as well, which is really bad. But it would sort out our food issues, but it would also affect the amount of food coming in from Rome. I'm going to do that, actually. Because Rome doesn't produce me a lot of food. We have some granaries here, but besides that, we're not producing a lot of food. So, cool. Let's import food into Irinium. We'll also go ahead and... Um, so, over in here, probably bring games now. I know Rome's actually already really happy. Don't need Romanization. Maybe increase taxes. Yeah, maybe we can increase tax. Yeah, let's increase taxes in Rome. Then down in the south... If what do we want to do? Maybe export food? Because that would help out our economy quite a lot. Romanization. Bread and games. Bread and games is pretty good, actually. Oh, that's lower taxes, sorry. Uh, more public order. I guess, yeah. I guess we'll, guess we'll bread and games. That's always good. Yeah, let's just bread and games down there. We'll have a nice little party. Over here, we definitely want a romanization. That is for sure. We lose public order, but we gain Latin conversion, which is something we desperately need. Over here, probably in, uh, probably lower taxes. Because I'm not really making any money here anyway. So, yeah, we're making no money from Carford. Yeah, Nova for some reason. And then over here, probably Romanization. Again, hurts public order. We're probably going to lose these to rebellions at some point. So, cool. That should be everything in that turn. Oh, I still have a region. Oh, yeah. Over I completely forgot about our province over here. I don't even know what to do over here with this. I guess we'll just make it probably just lower taxes. Again, we're making hardly any money there. Um, we do have a building slot here. We probably should build maybe some farmland. Is it good for farmland? Not really. 40%, 60%. So it's better for cattle. 
realistically maybe we could build some government buildings so you can also change government buildings which help improve certain things so for example civil courts help public order um these ones are more like governor based helping with taxes and then these are kind of uh making the region a lot more self-governed reducing public order penalties but also increasing roman culture so i guess we can build that gives us more food reserve as well oh that's a granary sorry i was lost i was lost there yeah, I think we pick that up. You know, it only costs us a little bit of money as well. So cool, let's grab that. So cool, let's end our first turn. So sorry, that was a really, really long first turn. We probably were rambling on for like 30 minutes, but I feel like there was a lot I needed to tell you guys, especially if you didn't bother going back and watching the other video. Um, however, from now on, things won't be as crazy as that. I'll be able to... Um just basically run through things a lot quicker. So Hannibal has almost 9,000 soldiers. We have almost 7,000 soldiers. Let's go. So, when I okay, guys, sorry about that. I quickly had to go ahead and restart because I tried fighting the Battle of Zama and the unit scale was just a bit too crazy. I think we had something like 18,000 soldiers in the battle and that's just a little bit too much for Attila to handle. It can kind of run 12 to 13 to 14,000 perfectly fine. But when it kind of gets to them higher and it's like close to 30, it, I mean, close to 20, it really does struggle. So I've gone ahead and lowered it down from ultra to large. We should still get, you know, 12,000 people battles fairly regularly. So the unit scale is still going to be normal. It just should mean that the game runs it a lot better and i think that would make it for a more enjoyable experience so i had to restart the campaign meaning i had to redo everything i tried to make sure I, I did everything the same maybe building a few more different buildings in different places kind of upgrading making sure i upgraded all my granaries um as well as improving all my food as well um but i'm pretty sure i did everything the same obviously my governors were different but i again just stuck them all in different places so hopefully nothing too crazy happened um and i don't think i did maybe i traded with a few more people but nothing too out of this world so what we'll do is we'll let hannibal attack us again and we'll get ready to fight this battle we are obviously on the verge of bankrupt not really a lot we can do and hopefully because it is summer next month we should be one producing more food and two producing a lot more money which should then would be mean we'll be able to stockpile a lot more as well so we will end the turn obviously hannibal is going to attack us and we will prepare to fight this battle now one of the really interesting things about the way that the battles work in ancient empires is that they are heavily dependent on the i guess for fatigue of your army you can see we've already got you know this is still twelve thousand people so even though i did lower the unit scale a little bit the battle is still going to be pretty crazy um so yeah the battle is heavily dependent on making sure you have reserves and you make sure making sure you have these fresh units which can then push up take over from the exhausted units and kind of rekindle their strength because if you, i think it's something like if their unit is exhausted and it has the red feet instead of the green ones right there i think they fire something like 0.5 of their normal no 0.2 of their normal fighting strength so that's like a minus 80 percent hit to their fighting capacity when we're exhausted meaning they're not going to do a lot now obviously sometimes it doesn't really matter if you're fighting exhausting troops but if you're also fight if you're fight if you're exhausted and you're fighting fresh or maybe even winded units you're going to be getting slaughtered not no matter whether you're a, a unit of Astarte, Principes, or even Legionaries, you know, a Astarte unit could probably take on an exhausted unit of Legionaries, just because they can barely swing their swords, they're falling over everywhere, um, so a lot of the times you do have to make sure you do have these secondary lines, which can go ahead and take over from your first line. So what do we have at our disposal? We have the Principes, right here, which are obviously going to be our, probably our strongest unit of infantry. We then have the Astarte, obviously a little bit weaker but nothing too bad. We then have these guys which are, our, our, I think, our crappy units. We also have some missile units. Uh, we also have these kind of pretty elite spearmen, and then obviously our cavalry and our Numidian cavalry. The Numidian cavalry, obviously, historically, pretty much won the battle for Scipio, so we're going to have to try and use them uh, correctly. We're also going to stick Starty and Principes in the same battle line. Historically, normally, they were uh, very, very similar, like, normally in the same battle lines a lot of the time. We'll stick these guys just behind them, um, kind of as in our reserve line, because I, I, I don't want to stick these guys. These guys are my weaker units, but I think I'd much prefer them to take over while when the enemy is tired rather than commit these guys first and have them getting routed. Um, I think I'd rather my, my sturdier units take the initial brunt and then these weaker units come up a little bit later. We also have Scipio right here as well. We can see him looking pretty chill. We, I'm pretty sure he does have a custom model somewhere. But he is, yeah, currently a unit of spearmen. So we're going to have to use him to help out in a few of our flanks. We'll stick our, our spearmen on either flank as well. 
Uh, yeah, we'll stick our flanks on either. Yeah, stick our spearmen on either flanks. I think I'm going to overload this right flank with cavalry and my new million cavalry. And then we'll stick the other two units over on this left side. Meaning that this left side is a little bit weaker, but hopefully it'll be okay. Oh, actually, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do something a little bit cheeky. Yeah. I'm going to stick my... Well, not cheeky, but this is actually a good move. Uh, is stick my skirmishers in between my first and second line. That'll probably be a good plan. Because then it means they can hit the enemy as they come on and then simply just fall back when the enemy get too close. And then we'll have our next line of infantry ready to push up. I think this is going to be a good tactic. Because obviously Scipio, I mean, uh, Hannibal does heavily outnumber us. Yeah, okay, cool. So yeah, Hannibal outnumbers us. I am Scipio Africanus. I do not need any tips. Um, yeah. We're outnumbered by about a thousand soldiers. He also has the range advantage. He has slingers on his side. And he also has elephants. We have the cavalry advantage, which we're going to have to use to our advantage. And you can see the AI as well. Sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. The AI doesn't always correctly use these formations. However, you can see the AI actually committing a decent amount of their forces um, into a more strategic formation so that they won't commit everything all at once. You can see they have kind of their skirmisher line up front, then kind of have their sword line, and then two lines of spears. And these spears will obviously not all get committed at one time. So this is really, really cool that the AI is actually taking part. And this is heavily down to the ancient empires creating this. You know, Petelius and his battles battle system, them actually using this is really, really nice. They are committing their cavalry to either flank kind of quickly. I'm in a half mind to actually go ahead and charge this cavalry down. If it gets a bit out of uh, out of control, I know they have cavalry in them woods. Fuck it, yeah, let's commit our cavalry. Probably want, oh, I want to commit our minions up here as well. I know they have horses over here. I just can't see them. They're committing their cavalry heavily on that left flank as well. Yeah, there they are. I definitely want to engage this cavalry. And if I can engage this one, we're also going to send these spearmen off to help out. Let's be very careful because of them elephants. They're simply going to run away. I mean, I can completely envelop this unit. When you guys come around here, yeah, they're pushing up their skirmishes quite nicely. I'm going to have to run my formation up. We're taking a bit of missile fire here. Uh, that's fine. You guys simply go in there. You guys chase them off. And we'll commit our spearmen off here as well to help out in these fights. The Midians should be going round. You guys should come flying in there. And we're going to go in slow-mo. Obviously, the battle is going to get a little bit hectic now. This is what I'm kind of scared of right here, actually. God, we're already tired. That's the problem. You have to be really careful when advancing. I'm hoping these javelins are going to be able to take these guys out. I also feel they're a bit close, actually, as well. I'm actually going to bring back these javelins. I'd much rather them stay alive for a little bit longer than we get fully committed. Uh, these guys, we can form an attack into Studio, maybe. Does help us out a lot. And our Numidian cavalry should be coming down as well to help out. We've got spearmen making their way in as well. Javelins are falling back. Everywhere else is absolutely fine. Cavalry fight should be going in our favor. And once we've dealt with the cavalry, we can then kind of envelop the rest of their forces. And as well as this, you can also reinforce battle lines. I'll show you guys when the battle lines truly kick off. But you can do some spectacular stuff uh, when it comes to reinforcing and replacing tired units. You can commit your second line, bring out your first line, and they won't rout or take heavy casualties. It's kind of almost, uh, you're almost kind of encouraged to do that. You're encouraged to resupply your soldiers whenever you can. Now, these guys are tired already, but I need to kill these elephants. I really, really do. Their front line is starting to come up now, so we're going to counter charge up here. Try and get ourselves engaged, at least with our front line. Hoping that our second line will win very, very soon. You guys can hold fire now. I don't really want you firing um, unless it's onto their javelins, which we are taking out. Now, one of the things as well you can definitely take into account is javelins do route extremely quickly to cavalry. Nice, we won back. So you'll see in a second, javelins are not meant to fight cavalry. And if you can get reinforcements to support them, they will come back from routing very easily. Like, Javelins are very much that like frontline force that comes, like, throws itself into battle and then retreats back. Um, you know, gets routed or something and then moves in once again. So you can see our battle lines. We have actually almost managed to get all our cavalry around the flanks as well, which is great news. Yeah, that's really, really good news. Yeah, Hannibal is trying to focus kind of the central point, trying to make a big hole in it. But we'll commit more soldiers. Nice. The elephants are going to rout as well. They did actually rout an entire unit of Hestati right there. But hopefully the spearmen will be a little bit better with the support of the Numidians. Okay, our infantry line has come up. Let's commit some more men up a little bit as well. Let's get this battle line a little bit further up. Hopefully these elephants will go down very soon. Nice. The elephants have been killed. Perfect. Cavalry can also go start chasing down the rest of their cavalry as well. Yeah, definitely do that. 
So let's go ahead and send all of our all of our cavalry here just to absolutely demolish them. I'm actually gonna oh, this unit's fresh actually, so let's turn this unit around them and get it to charge in straight away, I think. Bring up the rest of these guys. So something amazing I can do. So as you can see, this unit is quite tired. It's been fighting for a little while, but it's also had to run quite a lot. What I can do, and I'll do the same here as well, is I can throw this unit in to support it. So I'll send this unit in, they'll go ahead and commit themselves, and once they are fully committed, I can then bring this unit out and leave it back so it can all get rested. So I'll throw that unit in. It's, it's about fully, it's not quite fully committed, but it's, it's probably fully committed now. Then I can bring this unit out, so this unit will take over from that unit which was engaging currently, the first kind of wave. This unit will then push up, and I can sit this unit back and I can let it rest and it will get its energy back and then it also get committed. So you can almost cycle in and out units, which I think is such an awesome thing to have happen. Oh my god, guys, come in, kill all of these missiles. They're so ill defended and they're light infantry as well. They're going to get demolished. So for example here, I can see this unit is a little bit tired. I can send in some fresh units, same here as well. And if you cycle out your units and keep getting fresh units into the battle, you can just tell how quickly you can go ahead and win a battle. As I said at the beginning of the engagement, fresh unit, I mean, tired, uh, exhausted units fight at 0 0.2 of their normal fighting capacity. So basically at like 20% of their fighting capacity. So if you can get fresh units fighting at 100%, you can slaughter these units really effectively if you're just kind of constantly reforming up and pushing in fresh and tired units. Let's bring back all of these guys, push up Scipio as well. And we're just gonna slaughter these guys. So a lot of the time you see stuff like this, if the, if the AI or whoever I'm playing against had forces to stop me from chasing these guys down, which normally I guess, you know, normal players would be able to do, um, you know, for example, I wouldn't have won the cavalry engagement this, this greatly. It's just because it's the Battle of Zama, so the army's a preset. But yeah, if you could come back and protect these missiles and stop me from chasing them down, they would easily come back. You know, skirmishes are very easily broken. However, they can come back from routing pretty nicely as well as long as they're not being chased down but you know having this cavalry here is going to just be a massacre we're going to completely slaughter all of these missiles really effectively okay we definitely need more support here i'm actually going to send in scipio's unit and i also probably need to go ahead and commit these guys over here a little bit as well just commit some more reinforcements to this left flank and completely readjust this, this battle line for sure you guys come around here yeah, because we're exhausted here, so we do need to commit more men. Luckily, these guys are fresh, so I'm actually going to push these guys in as well to help out. We also have some more infantry here. Oh, yeah, I never brought out this unit. I think I'll bring out this unit. Yeah, this unit of Astarte. You guys are resting. We have all this Numidian cavalry as well. So we'll go back up to normal speed. Again, the battle lines look awesome. The graphics look amazing. That's, what, that's one of the things Attila has over Rome. Is the graphics just look so much better in Attila. The game is just so much like, further on. Are we going to get a unit out of here? We were, right? Yeah, this unit hopefully will be able to make its way back out and get its replenishment, like get its bigger back, as we do have more reinforcements coming as well. So yeah, full back, guys, if you can. Try not to route. Now, again, every time you do end up doing this, you're going to end up giving the, you know, the front line more leeway. The enemy are going to be able to push more soldiers into that front line, but normally it's not going to be too crazy of a turnabout. So you might be thinking, why am I not sending in this cavalry in quite yet? I want to bide my time because normally what ends up happening in these battles is the battles are much more heavily focused on routing the enemy rather than completely killing their soldiers. A lot of the time, historically, you know, bat armies didn't just completely um, didn't just completely fight to the death. A lot of the time, it was mainly down to routing, and it was kind of the forces once they did decide to route then the enemy would cut them to pieces because they're you know they're, they're facing away they're running away so that's when they you're really gonna start doing a lot of the damage so i want to try and keep the enemy in place as long as possible so that i can kind of deal with these missiles and then charge in the rest of my cavalry which i'm going to be doing very soon let's go ahead and try and get this unit of astarte out of there try and replace it same over here again i mean this unit of spearmen i imagine will be routing very soon but yeah we're going to pile in any second now Probably try and break this flank, and if you can, let's get some javelin throws right there as well. Everyone's looking okay right now. We could try and commit some more infantry. I'm actually going to get this unit out of there and net it rest as well. So imagine if you're playing like an actual player. Let's send in all our cavalry now. If you're playing an actual player, like so much, so much of this stuff, if he's doing it as well, you can have just some such cool battles and some really cool engagements. So let's send in all our cavalry. And, you know, normally this would not be like... Normally you'd have a second line of defense to stop this from happening. You'd have your second reserve line. 
because you can see there's these rear charges, the units are exhausted, so they're fighting at a poor capacity, and they're just going to mass route. They really don't stand a chance, especially because I've been replacing my units as well, so my units have just been fighting at such a, a, greater, uh, a greater capability this entire engagement. And there you go, Hannibal has been routed from the field of battle, leaving his men to torment and death. And we can just you know, we, we can cut down a lot of these guys. You can see their numbers dropping dramatically. They, 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 they basically would have dropped their weapons and sword and ran away. And because I'm in their rear, this is where most of the killing will occur in these battles. That's for sure. You know, units do route quickly, but they come back quickly. You know, if he had a, if he if for example Hannibal had a second line not committed to the battle, then this first line would have routed behind the second line. The second line could have engaged. The first line would have come back from routing, and you know they could have then reformed, got their energy back, and then pushed in. A lot of the way I see these battles going, as we just let the my my cavalry chase them down. You know, this is like Cane. This is revenge for Cane. There is nowhere for them to go, and they're slowly getting cut down. A lot of the way I see these battles going are like, especially if you're playing like a versus campaign, which I feel like this mod will excel at playing in a versus campaign, um, is you engage your first lines, they fight for a while, you do a little bit of management, re like retreating soldiers and kind of re reforming and stuff like that, uh, but nothing too crazy. The first line will end up routing, the second line will then go into combat, the first line will come back from routing, then you'll go ahead and get their energy back, and then you'll push them in, take the second line back out to get its energy back, the first line will fight again, you know, obviously you probably end up routing, falling back, the second line will go back in, and vice versa, and you can even take it to an extreme of having three battle lines, etc, etc. I feel like that's enough. I feel like we've chased them down a lot. We killed a lot of their skirmishes, which is something I really wanted to do. Because this, we're probably going to have to continue to chase this army down and beat it. We also didn't lose a lot of men either. A few of our frontal units did get beaten back kind of heavily. But the majority of our forces held strong. Yeah, we only lost 400 men, whereas we killed almost 5,000. My god. That was a slaughter. And again, our ca it, was, it was mainly down to our cavalry. And most of these kills came for when they tried to run, run away. They turned away. Hannibal managed to escape pretty freely. But yeah, pretty much all of these casualties came when they ran away. Uh, which was, that was a slaughter. Um, we definitely did lose our front line, did start to crumble. We lost a couple units to them elephants, but you know, yeah, killing all these skirmishers definitely helps our casualty. Because look, look how many skirmishers Hannibal had. Almost like, almost, yeah, two lines of skirmishers and we killed them all. The infantry as well got cut to pieces. My god, I was not expecting us to do that well. I am playing on hard still. I didn't lower the difficulty or anything. Um, it was just that route, you know, managed to get around the flank of their forces, crumbled their army, and obviously once one soldier starts seeing, uh, you know, someone running, they're going to start running as well. So I am definitely happy. That was a heroic victory indeed for Scipio. And he's hoping to get, I mean, he got 103 kills himself with his army, with his unit. But yeah, definitely the cavalry MVP of that battle for sure. And we also, the elephants did good against us though. The elephants get 78 kills, which is still pretty decent. I mean, you can even see right there the actual tooltip itself. Try to keep some forces in reserve behind the front line. They can fill any gaps that develop and also address flanks. So you can see that these tooltips are also being completely redone. So that you can actually get, you know, a bit more information in these load screens. So as you can see, we've managed to uh, defeat Hannibal pretty nicely. Killing a large portion of his army. We slaughtered his army. He only has 2,000 men left remaining. You could kill the tap, uh, kill the captives, take on warriors, or ransom them. I think obviously we're going to take on the warriors, get us a plan. But we are obviously away from home right now. We're in the north of Africa. We want to make sure that we have as many men as possible um, to obviously chase Hannibal down and also start taking Carthage because Carthage has a huge garrison. My lord is willing to. These guys want a peace sword. treaty. It is not. I will accept that. I have no this. real need to go to war with these guys. Mm, but again, I wouldn't mind taking more land in Africa, right? Or even just helping my ally. I'm going to decline that for now. I might regret that when they turn up with a full stack of uh, troops, but I'm going to stay at war with them, I think, um, and, and, and keep them at bay. So one of my allies have also been attacked. Now, this is a little bit dangerous because if they end up losing, if they end up losing, they're, you know, within, gr like, literally touching distance of two of my, my, my Spanish provinces, which I probably do need to try and protect. 
Obviously, we're going to stay on their side because I don't want the rest of my clan states. I think I have like four clan states in Spain. I don't want them all to get pissed at me and you know, go to war with me. Because that really does matter in this mod as well, is the opinion of factions. Um, but it's much easier to there get opinion. Funds in your treasury to build go away, Mr. sir. Um, so as you can see, we have obviously, you know, we did exceed our expenditure in, um, in autumn. Uh, no, in spring, sorry. However, now summer has arisen. You just look at the difference in our economy. Obviously, we've lost a few units in that battle, so we're not paying our soldiers as much. But look how much more money we are making in summer. It's actually pretty crazy. So you can just kind of see that, like, in summer, I want to try and stockpile money to then last me through till you know, I hit summer once again. Um, obviously, in spring and autumn, you'll be making some good money. Um, but, you know, winter, you're normally always either going to be losing food or losing money, um, especially in the early game, at least. So let's go ahead and uh, see our heroic victory right there. Slaughtering them. Uh, mutiny almost, uh, which is fine. I'll just get rid of everything right there. So war declared to so all my vassals coming in. So hopefully that should secure me um, there. Yeah, hopefully that will secure me. Because all of my vassals have also joined this war against these guys, hopefully they'll be able to take him on and just secure more of Spain for me, which will be perfect. Um, so we are taking a bit of attrition here. Oh, yeah, our army integrity is awful. Oh, because we're bankrupt. Okay. Yeah, because of the bankrupt, our army integrity goes down massively. However, it should go back up next turn when we can pay these soldiers again. Yeah, that's actually a really risky move. Not, oh, I should have really paid attention to that. We could have, like, automatically have lost. So we have a few fleet generals coming in to help out here. But we're going to fight this battle again. Just make sure we don't take as many casualties again. I'm going to need a strong force here to take out, um, to, to, to take out Carthage. And as you guys know, like, this is my one and only army I have. So I need to try and make sure I use it as effectively as possible. Also, as soon as I do run below 20, like if I lose a unit, it's going to be gone forever. And I'm not going to be able to recruit it again because I do have 36 units instead of 20. So because I've got kind of that hard cap of units, until I go down to 20 units, I'm not going to be able to recruit any more in this army. So I want to try and make sure this army stays as strong as possible. Because obviously, if I'm fighting with 36 units for the majority of the campaign, that's going to be really useful. Obviously, that's not going to be the case. I'm going to lose men. So the drive, that's fine. A nice little day to catch Hannibal and slaughter him. Look how minuscule his army looks. And I think we're going to go ahead and give these guys a, a nice little warm-up now. Yeah, these guys can be my front line, I think. So yeah, these guys can be my front line now. It's a little bit of a, you know, a less important battle. We've kind of got Hannibal on the ropes. We know we're really going to win. Um, and I kind of liked having my skirmishes on the second line, like here. They seem to do a good job, and I could retreat them fairly easily. We are once again, though, going to stick our... Yeah, we're once again going to go ahead and stick our... Like so. We'll stick our spearmen on the flanks again. So we'll stick one unit like there. Other unit like there. I mean, I don't know why I'm going this much in detail. We, uh, we completely outnumber Hannibal massively. And the fact that we have the cavalry advantage is absolutely huge. Having the cavalry advantage in this game can really just turn the tides. And he also doesn't have any elephants either. Um, so I can see he's deployed actually a lot of his cavalry on his, on his right flank. So we should probably go ahead and match that with our cavalry. Like so, and we can just leave the skirmish of cavalry over on this left flank. And you guys like, so, cool. So we are attacking him. Um, so yeah, we are attacking him. So we do actually have to advance on him. But we're not going to advance in. We're not going to like sprint to him at all. There's no need for us to do that. We can just li literally march our way over. Probably going to throw our cavalry up to our right flank fairly quickly. Try and maybe get a reaction of them. Make them try and reform a little bit. Just from our superior cavalry. And we'll triple speed it. Because obviously I don't want to make my troops exhausted uh, whatsoever. But I mean their front line is, is a mess right now. Look how little infantry they have as well. But again, oh my god, I'm getting shot. What am I getting shot by? Oh, they're slingers. Yeah, the slingers are slaughtering my lightly armored cavalry. Definitely try and get out of their range. For sure. Definitely stay out of their range. Oh, yeah, they have no infantry whatsoever. I should probably just charge their front line and it'd be a slaughter. Nice thing is as well. Oh my god, they're slingers, man. What are they chasing? Okay, let's go and take advantage. Hannibal is a mess since losing his army. Really, really is. But a lot of the times as well, you can also maybe make safe your army as well. Maybe not lose as many men. So we are going to come flying in. We're a little bit tired, but we're going to be able to catch all these slingers. And obviously, as you guys know from a previous battle, slingers are not going to be able to hold up for long in this battle. I'm going to go down uh, fairly easily. And they have nothing to support them either, so... Hannibal is simply getting ruined. We do want to try and take out the Skirmisher Cavalry if we can. Hannibal himself is making his way over to his right flank. Yeah, and if, as long as you're marching, you're not really going to lose fatigue too much. So you can just march to battle. If you run, you lose fatigue fairly quickly. So it's always a good idea if you can, just to keep your, your units nice and rested. 
Oh, they also have these naval units as well. So yeah, naval units have also been completely redone in the Tiller. So you actually have these really cool flagships. Looks really awesome. Really awesome. So we can start being a bit more aggressive now with these guys. Infantry is going to get uh, almost up here. We probably want to keep our entire skirmisher battle line back. They're a little bit lighter. So you can see they're running a little bit faster. So let's just bring them back. Cavalry's doing a great job killing the Midians. And their infantry is just going to get slaughtered now. Want to make sure we just engage all their spearmen. And then it's over. Once their spearmen are engaged, they have nothing really to stop me. You guys engage out. We'll actually tell the entire starting line just to hold fire. The starting can have a nice little rest. <laughs> They're going to have a nice little rest battle. Scipio can make his way up a little bit more as well. Uh, I'll probably tell the starting as well not to shoot their peeler as well. Probably doing more damage to my own lines than anything else. Yeah, they just don't have the manpower whatsoever. Especially because I, I numb them so heavily. It's going to be an easy battle. But I think if I would have auto resolved it, it would have been much, much harder. Not a cavalry chase them down. And this should be uh, this should be the end for them, for sure. Our infantry can just kind of surround them. Now, we are a little bit tired, but nothing... So are they. You know, they've had to come to me as well. Do we have any more cavalry? There's Hannibal as well up there. Let's go and dispatch some infantry to go deal with Hannibal. He's a former, former man. You know, he used to be great, and now look at him. Scipio is obviously going to be inspiring the men up there. I definitely want to be watching this as we just envelop these guys. These are African spearmen, so they're actually okay. We also have to worry about these generals as well. Let's go and dispatch a couple units of Astarte. We'll turn them around like so. Obviously, just tell them to march. We don't want them to be running into battle. Oh, victory already. Wow. Well, we want to make sure we try and run down just at least a couple of these guys. And obviously, if we can, try and take out Hannibal. We'll send a couple units to go deal with Hannibal. Yeah, he did not stand a chance in this battle whatsoever. It was lucky because, you know, because he had to retreat, he couldn't have uh, reformed up his battle line or anything like that. Especially if we chase down his unit as well, which this cavalry should be able to do as he runs away like the coward he is. Yeah, we should be able to do great amounts of damage to that. And especially even these generals over here as well. Probably worth chasing down and making sure we kill. Definitely if we kill Hannibal as well, that would be perfect. That'd kind of be their last little strong defense. You know, Hannibal might survive, but if we kill the general, then we definitely clinch victory for us. Nice, just killing more of these javelin men. Not really many of them left anyway. I want to at least make sure we deal with Hannibal's unit, which we are doing, and I want to at least make sure we deal with this unit. Still has like 60 men left. I want to just make sure it goes down to like 10 or something, and then we will just simply end the battle. Yeah, that's probably fine. We did chase down a lot of men. Decisive victory this time, not heroic, but you know, it's not heroic because we lost 81 men. And because we managed to rout them, and they had skirmishers. That's kind of the main reason they lost as many men as they did. Was because they had, like, what, five units of infantry, and they were basically non-existent. And the rest were just skirmishers. They didn't stand a chance whatsoever. Reducing these as well. Um, I guess we'll kill the captives. Leave none alive. Kill every last survivor. Many steps. So they'll be pissed at me, basically. I can't obviously take on the money. Could take on replenishment, but we don't really need it. So let's just kill them. I was going to say, we, we can't really take on the integrity because, um, you know, not having have to pay our units is kind of a big deal. Rather than these guys, just actually make our march onto their provinces as well. Really, really nice. Yeah, we can march on and take this and probably sack it as well. Don't see why we wouldn't sack it. Get ourselves some good money for campaigning. Um, also help our economy elsewhere. So yeah, I guess we just continue to move on. The garrison of the city, probably going to be okay. Carthage, I know, will be very good. But, oh no, maybe not. That's actually somewhat decent. We don't have any siege equipment either. Um, total labor force. We could build some siege equipment. It being a walled city, after all, it is a city. So I believe all cities are walled in this game, or at least all the major ones. Oh, no, the city isn't walled. So why can't we build siege equipment? How weird. I mean, how much is... We, oh, we have... Oh, we do have to... So it is a walled city. Okay. So we actually have to build siege equipment, which is fine. We'll just continue the siege. You can see my economy does get a little bit hurt there. Um, we obviously can't build anything this turn whatsoever. And a few rebellions are probably going to pop up in our empire very soon. Luckily, though, we do have some good garrisons everywhere else. Um, yeah. Like, the garrisons in a lot of these provinces are decent. You can see TREI, Principes, and stuff. Which I think we just got upgraded as well. So we should be able to upgrade all of these guys when we do reform up our army. But obviously, until we destroy Carthage, that's not going to happen. Um, all our granaries should be done next turn as well, providing us a, a ton of food. You can see our food reserves has gone down a little bit. 
So I'm not sure how the food reserve system works. If we get something, I'm gonna have to ask Patelius for sure. Nothing I can Garrett's do about this, right? Household is the object's assistant. Nothing I can do about this. I'm hoping it's not going to go down. Like it's gonna be fine because surely it's gonna go up after the bankruptcy thing goes away. So I'm hoping my army's not going to rebel. If it does rebel, I'm absolutely fucked. <laughs> and Scipio has rebelled against me. I just, I completely forgot it'd be that much of a penalty. Um, but we have money now, so we should be able to pay the units now. I just have to hope they don't rebel or anything like that. You guys, yeah, you guys are just going to get in range of the fleet. My lord is willing to lay oh, so these are, the these are nomadic tribes. Okay, yeah, I'm going to make peace with the nomadic true. tribes because I don't really want to, do, want to have to fight them. You know, they're nomadic, they're annoying. They can live in Africa for all I care. That's a little bit scary. You're nomadic as well, and you're just passing through. It'd be really cool if you could go ahead and, like, set your laws on... Masali want me to join their wars. I mean, Masali has been Rome's longest standing ally, so I guess... I guess we will, in the hopes that they won't come and ruin me. I offer this morsel. Now, Who are you? Like a wolf at the Why are we at war? Perhaps you will go find better hunting you're not the person we just declared else. war, and you're someone else. So yeah, I'll take that. 15 grand is perfect. I'll take that. I have no plans on going north anytime. You know, I want to deal with Carthage at the moment. Didn't even realize we were at war in the north. Imagine if they would have come down, it would have been pretty bad. So some factions have been destroyed. Attrition in our... So we lost 500 men because we couldn't pay them. They deserted it. Oh no, was that just... I think that was actually just desert attrition. Oh no, no. It was because... Yeah, that was actually because I did that. So they're going to mutiny next turn, maybe? That's fine, whatever. Uh, peace treaty, war declared, some military investment, which is fine. Uh, so then these are just factions encountered, war declared, obviously. Food shortages, okay, cool. So, yeah, we've, we've got money now, which is good, and we're also making food. It's autumn now, so we're probably we're making a lot of money in autumn as well. And we also should have got a bunch more food reserves as well. Now, our food reserve is actually dwindling, which isn't great. Hopefully, we can improve that. I'm not actually sure how to improve it. So this should be a fairly easy battle. And I want to kind of go in it so I can I can loot it. The auto result doesn't also tell you what the best option is anymore. So you kind of have to take a little bit more of a, a balance on. So we're going to go in protected. We should be able to win this. Oh, we don't. Valiant defeat. Wow, we lost a thousand men. That is awful. Okay, crap. And we lost a large portion of our army now. I was not expecting that. I was expecting an easy victory there. I guess we would have had, we should have fought it. That is not good whatsoever. And we're going to get pushed back as well. We can't stick them under siege again, and we're now losing men. Wow. Ancient Empires is a brutal mistress. Campaign movement range, 100% if we can get two points in that. But do we already have it? We already have a point in that, I think. That's actually good as well. It does give us integrity, so uh, it's not actually too bad. Yeah, just one point there. Uh, that's, not, that's not really too important right now. I mean, obviously, the Legion leveled up as well. I guess integrity is our most important thing. Why are we still losing so much integrity? I don't want to decimate them either. I guess we want to try and improve it as much as we can. Upkeep could be kind of nice. Morale. Attrition when laying siege is also great. Um, I guess we'll go for the uh, this one right now. Because it will lead to more or less attrition and stuff. Okay, that, that's, really, that's really bad for us. We are now making a ton of money though. Which is huge. We're going to be super rich next turn. Which we can use to our advantage. So I'll probably definitely improve the woodwork. Get more resources out there. Probably also going to improve the aqueducts. Now the aqueducts are extremely expensive. But they provide you with some great buffs. Especially for example in this one. Construction costs for the entire region is reduced. If I go ahead and get this industrial one. This one goes ahead and gives me a great amount of fertility bonuses. And this one also gives me some great public order and sanitation. Sanitation is an issue in the region. That is for sure. But I would love to maybe try and fix it elsewhere. And maybe get an industrial one. Yeah, I think I'm going to try and get an industrial one. The industrial one does take a long time, but I think it'll be worth it. Um, over here, for example, improving fertility could be great. Irrigation plus free fertility bonus. Wait, so what's, what's that quickly? So that says 21 irrigation. What does that mean? Can I hover over it? I can't. It's so annoying when the game does that. So I can I do it like that, probably? <laughs> I just want to know what the irrigation means. I'm going to have to ask Patelius about that as well. It says it up there, but I just don't know. We'll obviously have to find that out. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Um, so yeah, we'll, I will probably definitely build the industrial one, that's for sure. Down in the south, what do we want? 
What do we want? Farms are fine. Granaries have been built. Maybe could continue to upgrade the granaries. More food reserve. More money as well, which is always nice. Um, over here, we maybe have to think about maybe building another army. Depending on what's going to happen. Also, obviously, we might be getting rebellion soon as well. So, I think an army... Yeah, I think definitely an army in Spain has to be a, a thing. So, let's go ahead and raise a force. We'll raise the second legion. So, you're an architect. Not really very good. Sanitation. There we go. Expert swordsman's probably good. These are also kind of good. Good movement range is also always, always really good. I wish you would show this up when you were building certain armies as well. These guys are free, so I guess I'm going to pick up Gaius. He will be my second legion. And we'll stick him on horseback as well. Um, what? Oh, that's just saying someone, one of our generals died in battle. That's fine. And we, oh, we can't actually recruit any units here. We have any military buildings. So I guess we should immediately invest in getting some. Can we even do that? Can we even build military Roman units? Or does it need to be more Romanized before I can do that? Is it this? And then... Yeah, so how do I actually muster military forces? Because I can, right? Because these are... These provide good garrisons. So then how do I muster units? I don't know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find that out, obviously, before next episode. So cool. I'm going to end the episode here. We did suffer a, a pretty annoying defeat there trying to take the city. Um, we're obviously just going to fight it and win the battle next time. But it's going to be pretty brutal. We do have a lot of money now. So we can hopefully reform. We're going to have to 100% get more soldiers before going after Carthage. That is for sure. Um, yeah, actually, let's have a quick look. Because what am I going to build a building? I'm probably going to build a building in here. Can I build a military barracks here? That's a four because obviously you should you shouldn't be able to recruit like Roman units in Rome. Uh, I mean only in Rome. So that's banditry. So that's, yeah, that's, that's military. Where where do I get soldiers from? Where do I get soldiers from? I'll just ask Patelius. I'm sure he will let me know. I'm sure it's one of these buttons. I just need to to quickly find it. Um, because yeah, obviously you should. Oh, there you go. It's a garrison. Oh, okay, so okay, so it's yeah, so it unlocks recruitment. So for example, if I was to go over here and improve any of these, provide garrison. Do any of these allow me to recruit units? So you can only recruit units in Rome with this type of building. They provide good garrisons, like good, really good garrisons. What about over here? Can I provide any, like, with these guys? No, it's all just provide. What about in the capital? Yeah, so I can only recruit units in Rome. Besides, I'm sure I can get auxiliaries um, elsewhere. That's very interesting. So this guy is basically useless. I guess I can probably try and use him. Um, even though it doesn't make very useful. Um, do any stances? No, no stances. That guy's probably useful. So I probably need to stick someone in Rome um, and then send them out. I mean, that makes sense. You know, Rome did only recruit legions in Rome, you know, in Italy. So you're a good educator. Okay, cool. I'll probably like, probably this guy. Cost me a bit of money, but we have a decent amount of money to play with. And now we should be able to recruit. Yeah, there we go. Starty, all the beautiful stuff. So cool. We'll, we'll deal with this, this next turn. I have a few questions I want to ask Vitellius before really getting stuck in. 100% going to need to defeat these guys and, and loot it probably for economy. Winter is next time, next turn. So we're going to have to be careful about that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to drop a like and a comment down below. It really helps out the channel. And let's try and get like 600 likes on this first battle episode. Um, it was a lot to kind of understand. But hopefully the more we play it, the more we can just jump into it. And you guys will understand. And I will understand a lot more. And we can push on. Because as you guys just saw, I'm still learning stuff about the campaign the more and more I play. And obviously stuff is still subject to change and stuff. So yeah, make sure to like and comment. I'll see you guys next time. And fish out.